To the Spirit Safe Lines, Rob. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. What do we have this time? It's a Scotch whiskey because last time we had a world whiskey, uh, slightly over packaged or uh, oversized packaging. It's a Cooper's Choice Craig uh, no age statement expression called Forest Fruits. Uh, I've done one Craig Ellicky before, the 13 year old. Um, and that was very, very good. And it was time to do another Craig Ellicky. And I saw this uh, available at a uh, retailer in Alberta and I thought I would order it. It wasn't that expensive, maybe 89 uh, Canadian or something like that. I think it's sold out at that particular uh, retailer now. So unfortunately, you may have uh, a task on your hands if you want to find um, a bottle of it. Uh, no age statement. Uh, but it is uh, natural colour and no and um, non-chill filtered, a bottle at 55% ABV. And there aren't many whiskies out there that are uh, at that higher ABV and from a recognised distillery. So I thought it was worth a go. Uh, Craig Elke, it's one of those distilleries that uses worm tops, so it, it delivers a very uh, full uh, spirit, a very um, weighty spirit with some sulfur notes to it, so it may not be for everybody. And uh, obviously port cask is a, uh, a ruby port cask is, is, is a very um, fulsome flavour as well. So a bit of a risk because you've got the very full um, spirit, full flavoured spirit meeting a quite powerful uh, cask. So, again, a risk there. I think the two work reasonably well together. Uh, if you notice from the colour, it's got a little bit of a, a ruby tinge to it, which is nice. Let's see what we have. Hmm, full nose, full aroma. And yes, there are some forest fruits there. Bramble fruits. And the port cask is really making itself known. That rubbery sort of that, that I often pick up from port casks. Lots of toffee, sulfur, and carbolic going on. And the sulfur, it's likely a little bit from the cask and a little bit from uh, from the spirit because of those worm tubs. It doesn't have the copper content, so uh, or it doesn't receive a lot of uh, of the surface area from the copper, therefore a lot more sulfur stays in the spirit. Oaky, some black currants going on, licorice, leather, a little bit of chocolate, pineapple, barbecue sauce, the port finish really very very powerful on this doesn't say how long doesn't say how old it is doesn't say how long it received that finish for some lemon and lime and a bit of citrus to cut that uh, barbecue sauce oat biscuits a little bit of rose water plumped soaked Raisins, a little bit of um, peppermint oil. Mm. Dates, cinnamon, cloves. A bit of smoke, so maybe burnt toast or wheat bix. On the whole, it's a full nose and it's got sort of three sides to it. It's got a sweet fruit syrupy side, it's got oak tannins and spice, and it's got a sulfury or meaty spirit. And the three kind of uh, are competing a little bit. 
it's altogether a full, very busy node. See what we have on the pallet. Full, bold, spicy, chocolate, wintergreen, oak tannins, a little bit bitter as it moves on to the finish, bitter chocolate, dark rum, fruity and spicy, alcohol note definitely at 55% and probably a young, youngish whiskey. Lots of citrus, spices, mulled wine. Really very good. Let's uh, add a little bit of water. It will take some water, given that it has that bold cask finish and is a relatively young whiskey at a high ABV. It will take one and a quarter Immediately a lot more salt has come to the fore, uh, a softer leather. Licorice, black licorice soft, uh, mixed salted nuts. Great bust, raw almonds. And again, the forest fruits, the bramble fruits. Winter green. Chocolate, a little bit of smoked meat of some kind. Greek yogurt, a bit of honey. The smoke is working with a sort of aniseed, an anise note, a little bit. A bit of tart apple. Brightened up the palate an awful lot with a little bit of water. And for the first time, malty and um, barley sugar notes are beginning to show on the palate. Rich fruit, dry spice, cloves, orange peel, sweet grape, demerara sugar. It goes from a fruit syrup to spices to a golden syrup on the finish. Hmm. Yeah, adding a little bit of water really does allow the spirit to shine a little bit. Finish, slightly burnt toffee, brandy butter, lemongrass, rum, leather, herbal notes, wintergreen, vanilla, carbolic, and caramel. Mm. Mm. So if you see this for a sensible price, I would go for it. Well worth um, finding your favorite distilleries in the, um, in the independent bottlings. Cooper's Choice is the second Cooper's Choice I've tried now, so I won't hesitate to try other interesting distilleries in Cooper's Choice livery. Um, I'm pleased that I got it for that good price of less than 100 Canadian for a high ABV uh, whiskey. Yeah, I encourage you if you can, if you see it, to pick one up or anything else from Cooper's Choice. I think will probably be a good buy. And if you don't have access to this and you want to try 
Craig Adderkey, I found the distillery bottling of the 13 to be really very good. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed the review. Like, comment and subscribe. Hope to see you soon. Cheers, bye bye.